It's very hard to discuss a lot of the open source software stuff without you know, pointing out the elephant in the room that Aaron did, which is that about 0.1% of people use it. And if there's anything I've learned about through a, you know, about 10 years of activism is you can't tell people to give a shit about something. If you tell them you should care about this because of all these features, they don't care. If you tell them you should care about this because you're bad, that, just, that doesn't work. If you, like, whether it's a repairability and people just making fun of you for being poor for not buying a new one because they don't like being lectured or telling them to get an electric car and then getting coal rolled on you by an F-250 diesel. Telling people they're bad doesn't work. What actually works is showing them the ways in which they're being screwed, uh, not shoving it down their throats, but just showing them the hundreds of thousands of little cuts that eventually get them to care about a particular issue. So for me, I've been talking about this idea that if you can't fix it, you don't own it. And I've realized that this sentence is a little bit too long over the years it's actually a lot easier to describe what's going on, which is uh, you, you don't own it. And I think that when you encompass everything under this umbrella, it all starts to make sense. And it brings all these different groups of people together. So I just thought I'd like to give you a couple of examples of some words that have been redefined over the past several years. One of them is the word ownership. And I don't like when people try to redefine words and use them the way they're not intended. As you can see, this word has had a meaning since the 14th century. To acquire in exchange for payment in money or an equivalent to buy the usual sense, to acquire, which means I have it, I own it. The action or act of obtaining something in exchange for payment in money or an equivalent, now the usual sense. This word has been me defined in many ways and I'm gonna read some of the company redefinitions of this word as we go on. One of them comes from Sony. This is a legal update notice from December of 2023. As of December 31st, 2023, due to our content licensing arrangements with the content providers, you will no longer be able to watch any of your previously purchased content and the content will be removed from your video library. We sincerely thank you for your continued support. <laughs> AKA, fuck all of you. Um, <laughs> when you now, the, the, the important thing here is when people will look at this and say, well, you don't get it. You were streaming it. You were right. No, no, no. It said purchased. When you hit add to cart, it said, do you want to buy this? And you may wonder, how can they get away with this? I put a small sample over here, and the only way I could fit it is by using font size 2. Um, you know, I didn't just learn how to use PowerPoint this morning. This is total. So that's as much as I could get on one page. Now, when you go to page 21 of the Terms of Service, that's where Sony decides to redefine a word that has meant something for seven centuries. Use of the terms own. Ownership, purchase, sale, sold, sell, rent, or buy in this agreement or in connection with the content does not mean or imply any transfer of ownership of any content. Uh, if they were to say authorship, that makes sense. I cannot take credit for making Game of Thrones, especially season seven. But I'm not, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I don't own it. Except as stated in this agreement, all content provided through PSN is licensed on a non-exclusive and revocable basis. So instead of, uh, See, this is one of the things that I talk about, where if they said on the front page, instead of purchase, uh, licensed on a non-exclusive and revocable basis, you may have not spent $20 on it. If you come into my house and you try to take something out of my media player, one of the great things about Texas is I have the right to blow you out of my house. But if you use TCP IP to break into my house, eh, sucks to suck. Uh, when you... Another word that's been redefined recently, the word lifetime. This word used to have a meaning. Since the 14th century, the duration of a person or animal's life, the period of time over which the person's life extends. Free, uh, this is, well, let's just talk about some of the ways that this word has been redefined. Whether we're talking about textbooks, uh, this is one of the things that you have to do if you're gonna get a, go to college courses nowadays. A lot of times you cannot get a paper textbook the professor will require that you buy one of these textbooks that they also just so happen to get a kickback from. Now, if there, I, this is a little too small for me to zoom in fully, so you can see there's three options, 180 days, one year, and lifetime. And you could spend twice as much to get a lifetime. Lifetime license. How long do you think lifetime means? Anybody? Five take, take a guess. Five years. Very good guess. You must have meant Austin Community College. It says <laughs> products labeled as lifetime typically mean five years of online access and permanent downloads to a support device. Typically, not even five. Some of these have been revoked after a year and a half. When purchasing a digital product, you can download it for use on a supported device. The downloads will function so long as vital source supports the device. This means that if a device or operating system loses compatibility, your downloaded product may no longer work as intended. Thank you. Uh, let's. We have some more examples here. This is actually one that just some got emailed to me this morning. There was this uh, company uh, that makes a music player for Android that was offering lifetime licenses in order to not see advertisements. So it's one of these things where people will say, well, if you just paid, then we wouldn't have an ad supported model. Uh, this lifetime license lasted for, uh, anybody have a guess? Six months. Four months. Wow. Four months. <laughs> Books, this is another one that's been fun. This just happened recently with Amazon and Kindle. Download and transfer via USB. You used to be able to download a copy of the book that you purchased. You had a permanent copy. Starting February 26, 2025, the download and transfer via USB option will no longer be available. You can still send Kindle books to your Wi-Fi enabled devices by 
selecting the deliver or remove from device option. Now, aside from the fact that they have told everybody who does not have a Wi-Fi and a connected Kindle to get fucked, this also means that they have the ability to edit books in your library. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to make a new revision because they don't like the book the way it was written. Uh, like, they're not going to make a sixth edition. This is one, something where they can take the book that's on your device, the next time you connect to their server to see it, it is different than what you actually bought and paid for. One example from one of Roald Dahl's books. They replaced the word fat with enormous in describing Augustus Gloop. They replaced great horsey face to face. Cloud men and James and the giant peach were renamed to cloud people. He needs to go on a diet was removed. Mothers and fathers were changed to parents. Plenty of families with a husband, a wife, and several children was changed to families. And if I actually wanted to go through every single one of the edits in this book, it comes out to approximately 53 pages, which is why I've only... Whoa. 53 pages. Yeah, there was somebody who did an article on this, and their article was 53 pages. Just a little table of everything that was edited in these books. Uh, I just wanted to read this. When it came to children's books, Dennison said that Dahl didn't care what adults thought as long as his target readers were happy. I don't give a bugger what grown-ups think was a characteristic statement. And I'm almost certain that he would have recognized that alterations to his novels prompted by the political climate were driven by adults rather than children. Dahl wrote stories intended to kindle in children a lifelong love of reading and to remind them of the wonderlands of magic and enchantment, aims in which he succeeded triumphantly. Adult anxieties about political niceties did not register in his outlook. Although Dahl could be unabashed in offending adults, he took pains to never alienate or make unhappy his child readers. Uh, this is a fun one. So, uh, How many people here have kids? Anybody? Okay. How much did you spend on the baby monitor for your kids' room? Approximate. 40 bucks. Who else? Any numbers? 65. Okay, this is a baby monitor that costs $400. And the entire idea behind this baby monitor, similar to the watch that I have, is that it will tell the, how, how your baby's breathing, it's gonna say the air quality of the room, it's gonna figure out, like, you know, some has some way to be able to tell his heartbeat, all these different things. And it was $400 to get access to every single one of these features. Some people may think $400 is steep, but to get access to all these features on your device is pretty cool. Except uh, you don't. Uh, a year after the device was, um, a lot of people bought this, live breathing and sleep tracking are available with a Miku membership, activate membership. And when you say, why am I seeing this? If you were to click that link, it's a polite way of saying, you know, LOL, JK. That's not working only on your device. Uh, this is an interesting one. Anybody here have a Roku television? Roku television. Okay, so there was an, this is a very interesting coincidence here. So everybody last year, in the beginning of last year, around March, got pushed this update. We've made an important update. We've updated our dispute resolution terms. Select agree to agree to the updated terms to continue enjoying our products and services. Can anybody tell me what word is missing on the screen over here? Disagree. Disagree. And there is a word for people that try to get you to do something without your consent and don't offer you another option and lock you away from being able to get out. You can't change the HDMI source on your fucking television until you click agree. Now, why do you, they're claiming that there's absolutely no, this is just a pure coincidence, this is not why. They released this in March of 2024, and, and it looks like if you look through the Maine Attorney General's website, there was a data breach discovered that affected 15,000 Roku customers in February of 2024. And it just so happened that the update to the terms of service that was pushed and forced into your television required you to go through forced arbitration and not, have, and not be able to sue them. Complete and total coincidence. Uh, this, uh, this is the entire notice of data breach. They're explaining to you how you can check your credit, how to go to Equifax and TransUnion. You have the right to place an initial or extended fraud alert on your file, and yeah. Uh, they, they've held your TV hostage from March of 2024. Uh, other examples here. Uh, Rivian Electric Trucks. This is one of my favorites that came out recently. This is on X uh, from Mr. Wasim Basaid. He is the, one of the heads of software at Rivian. And there was, uh, he was talking about software unlocks for certain features in their vehicles. And I saw this get posted as a response. This is so awesome. Large pack plus unlocking coming next, next in the roadmap. What does that mean? That means you bought this electric truck, you bought it with a, with a battery, and you're only allowed to use this much of the battery. Now, many people have commented on this saying, you're just complaining about nothing. You didn't pay for that. That wasn't, that wasn't advertised with that size battery. They're allowed to say that you have to unlock it this way. And to those people, what I try to do is I try to work backwards when it comes to these things. Drive over to the, to the headquarters of Rivian. Walk right into the CEO's office and say, sir, I would like some lithium ion batteries for free. I would like a, a pile of them. And perhaps if you, know, if, if you wouldn't mind being so Christian as to give me a battery management system for free along with that. So how many can you sign up for? 100 pounds of free batteries, 200, 300? 
his secretary would be hitting a red button on the bottom of the desk for security before he could get to the f and they get the f out of my office sound. Because publicly traded companies worth $10 billion do not give away hundreds of pounds of free earth minerals. You paid for that when you bought the car. People will say that this is an electric vehicle problem, but I guarantee if internal combustion engines were invented today, you would have a 13-gallon gas tank with a little sensor in it where you had to pay $10 a month to be able to get past 8 gallons. Mm -hmm. Companies do not give away one ton of earth minerals for free. And if you were to try to unlock that on any of these devices to be able to get access to what you already bought and paid for, Section 1201 of the DMCA says that you can go to prison for three to five years if you make that available. Now, the problem that I see with this entire thing and why this uh, manages to succeed, it comes back to one of the sayings that's uh, one of the headlines of the conference. It says, don't be evil. And the only reason that many of these companies are able to be evil to us, in my estimation, is because we are very good at being evil to each other. When these type of things happen, whether it's people that I'm talking to in person or stuff in my comment section, it's always the same thing. It's, what, what kind of idiot would do that? What kind of moron would buy an Android phone? What are you, poor? Don't you know that they don't care about data privacy? Hey Siri, is the delete button necessary for data privacy? Last year it was found out that four to five years worth of people's photos in their libraries in iCloud just showed up again magically after they had deleted them on their phone. This, uh, that statement did not age well. Uh, the people that will make fun of people who decide to use an iPhone and say, what kind of moron uses an iPhone? You have no user choice here. You can't install an, you, you can't unlock the bootloader. There's no headphone jack. You can't expand the storage. Samsung even managed to make fun of people buying iPhones for the fact that they did not have a headphone jack. That did not age well. When it comes to cars as well, you will have people that um, make fun of people who buy electric cars, make fun of people who buy Tesla or anything else, saying, you, if you want to repair it, it, it's so incredibly expensive and they don't make it easy to repair. Everything is an assembly and they don't make it available to you. Why, are you, wh why don't you buy like a real manly car, like something made in America, like, like a Ford F-150 truck? Because they're easy to repair. Instead of uh, having some sympathy when they get screwed over, they'll say, you should have bought what I bought because I'm smart and I make better decisions than you. Until they have to pay over $5,000 for for their taillight because Ford now makes the taillights in their truck connected to the sensor that sees if there's something behind you, connected to the camera, connected to the CAN bus and everything else, and the LED assembly is connected to the LED. It's all one piece. I didn't realize that, you know, apparently, I didn't realize that they hired the engineers uh, at Apple that make the entire, everything in a MacBook, one or two pieces and sell it as an assembly. There will be people that say, well, this happened to you because you're an idiot. You should have bought another brand car. Ford stands for found on road dead. Didn't you realize that that's why it takes four months to get a freaking taillight until you have a bumper that takes you eight months to fix? Well, that's because you're an idiot and you bought an electric vehicle. What are you buying a Cadillac for anyway? You should be smart like me and buy a standard Chevy and save money because those things don't have all these computers in them and they're not going to be able to spy on you. Until the, you find out that for the last 10 years, every single General Motors vehicle from their low end to their high end, from their electric to their internal combustion engine, have been selling your information to LexisNexis who've been selling it to Geico and Progressive and everybody else so that they could hike your insurance rates, which they just got to, you know, Ken Paxton started doing some work suing General Motors in the state of Texas, asking them for tens of billions of dollars and to delete all of this data. Uh, the best part of this is that every single... Hmm? The uh, best part of this is that every single one of these companies to get combined spent about $25 million claiming that if you're able to fix your own car, if you get access to the tools to be able to do it, that a sexual predator could stalk you. And, uh, and this is a commercial where they implied that this young lady was sexually assaulted in a parking lot because a technician was able to get access to a tool to fix their car. Uh, the problem that I see is that and every, every, there's so many people that instead of saying, yeah, here's how you got screwed, here's what you could do to not get screwed in the future, like let's work together towards it, we all argue amongst each other for that quick little dopamine hit of, I'm smarter than you because I chose to buy the right thing. I used Graphene and you used Stock Google. You're an idiot. You bought an iPhone. You're an idiot. Everybody makes fun of everybody else for getting screwed when not, and they don't accept the reality. Every single person, okay. Two, except for my YouTube comments, because all of them read the entire end user license agreement according to their comments, and I'm sure that, I'm, I'm sure they report the $20 that their neighbor gives them for mowing their lawn to the IRS as well. Uh, but everybody here, nobody really can take the time to look at all of this stuff. Aaron is one of the smartest people that I know, and he's a very detail-oriented programmer. And he, okay, how many people here uh, use the bathroom and wash their hands? No judgment when they got here, right? What, one of the things you may have noticed in the bathroom is that, in spite of this being very fancy, very expensive, nice building, is that uh, there is, promise this is not a bathroom selfie, that uh, th this, uh, these are uh, soft soap dispensers over here because the soap dispenser on the wall has planned obsolescence. You can't buy bags to this anymore. Old bag, 
new bag don't fit the old machine. It reminds me of something that Bill Burr said along the lines of like, new charger don't fit the old phone, this is your hero. We don't have the time to read every single end user license agreement. We don't have the time to read 900 pages before we buy a car. People don't do this. When you're buying uh, like episode of 24, season five of Prison Break on Sony's PlayStation Store, you don't have the time to read through 35 pages to figure out that on page 21, they revoke the definition of the word ownership. If, when these things happen, it, I think it's important to do two things. A, point out why it's happening, and B, have like a little, just a little bit of empathy and sympathy for the people that it occurred to, rather than using it as a means to say, well, I'm smarter than you because I don't use that software, I don't buy that car. Because uh, every time the people that are doing this, that are getting absolutely rich off of trying to build nickel and dime you for every last piece of data, see that we're fighting amongst ourselves instead of getting together to punch up rather than punch each other, they laugh, and that's how they continue to make money, and that's why they can continue to do this. And one of the reasons, that, the biggest reasons they're able to continue to do this is because of a law that Nathan's going to be discussing called Section 1201 of the DMCA, which says that it is illegal to break a digital lock. If I manage to get access to the entire battery in my Rivian, if I manage to get rid of what allows my car to spy on me and then report all of my information to my insurance company, I can get, or the person who makes that tool can be put in prison for five years. If you try to get around any of this stuff, you are not allowed to reverse engineer it. You're not allowed to do math. This is a law that makes math illegal. And I'd like to give Nathan an opportunity to discuss it a little more. Thank you. Thank you.